everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And right here I have 100 grams of Knit Picks Dishy yarn, which is 100% cotton. It is dry, wound in a cake, and I have some fresh tulip one-step tie-dye that I mixed today. So let's dye this yarn cake. A long, long time ago, I played with a commercially wound ball of yarn and these tulip tie-dyes um, to create a colorway, but it's been a long time ago and I thought this deserved a spot on Dye Pot Weekly. I have four colors today, fuchsia, turquoise, purple, and green. And so let's just start giving this a shot. Hopefully, oh dear. <laughs> I was like, hopefully this is pretty absorbent. Um, I believe in general Dishy is fairly absorbent, but I was hoping that this would just start sinking in. Um, this might not be as easy as I thought. So let's change tactics. Let's actually stick this in and inject it a bit. into the cake. So I'm sort of inserting the ball, the tip of the ball in and squeezing. I got a phone call and we are sitting in a puddle of dye that is just dripping out of this yarn cake. Uh, shouldn't a dishcloth be absorbent? Um, I mean, look at that. This is completely dry, 100% cotton, and yeah, although we are getting a really cool pattern on the outside. Um, that is a bit disappointing, but you know what? Let's just do what we can. I'll put some dye on here, sort of go, trying to get it to go in. I'm thinking we may not end up with a lot of color towards the center uh, and we'll probably need a lot more of this red. I mean like see this started off dry and just see how absorbent that was whereas man some cottons and I think that like uh, Lily Sugar and Cream does this some cottons will just like absorb the color so 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 fast and so I am injecting some, but yeah, that's just dripping out. Come on. So now we can see clearly I'm going for more um, adding color to the outside of the cake, maybe a tiny bit on the inside. This is not gonna end up anything like what I was going for, but the good news is that in the center of the cake, that is some yarn that does go all the way to the center. So therefore, we will have, and we will see some color penetration all the way through, but just not quite what I had been going for. And, you know, it's not gonna be like a clean gradient or anything. I am still trying to inject color in, but look at that. It's just dripping out. Bummer. I mean, at least this is looking cool, right? <laughs> and it's overlapping and giving us some cool, cool colors. But, I mean, I feel like, I feel like we're gonna have some like really not great color penetration overall. Um, bummer! I mean, don't get me wrong, this looks beautiful, but these colors should not be just dripping out. I was hoping that it would go in. Clearly, I'll, I'll try this again someday with a wet cake. <laughs> um, you know, but and we'll do our best with what we have. And oh, looks like I've covered up some of that red a little too much. That's okay. We're again doing with what we can. Um, 
I mean, I still think we could end up with something really cool. And now at this stage, the outside is starting to get wet. Um, trying to add some color toward that center bit. We did cover up a lot of the pink on the outside. So, see now some of that is going in. But I'm afraid if I were to push in, I mean this only goes down like a handful of layers. Oh dear. I feel like if I add more color, it's not going through to other layers. I feel like it's just going uh, more and more on the outside of it. Well, we gave this a shot. Uh, certainly I can always over dye, however this comes out. It was an experiment. <laughs> oh man, I did make my little rag a lot prettier that I used to sort of wipe up the dye, but all right, I'm gonna go set this in a plastic bag, let it sit at room temperature for about 24 hours or more, and then we'll try to rinse out a bunch of this color. Oy vey. It's been a while since I've worked with Knit Picks Dishy, so I think I forgot how just not absorbent it is. Whoops. <laughs> Here is my tie-dyed yarn cake. Likely fail after two days. Um, I mean, it's beautiful. Like, it looks gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, yeah, I mean, how is that for a beautiful, beautiful thumbnail? But, <laughs> well, let's pop it into the water and see what happens. I have a feeling that this is going to be a bit of a pain to wash and dry. But I will say, those colors swirling off of it like this are rather cool and rather interesting. Um, I'm curious, I doubt very many colors penetrated towards the center. Hopefully we have like a lot of color on the outside and then some specks of color towards the interior. I hope. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. And we can always over dye the product, but I just have a feeling that washing it is going to be complicated. I mean, I tried to insert dye into the interior. I really should have just pre soaked it first. Oh, but look at that water coming out. That is just so, so, so pretty, the way that those colors are all coming around. Yeah, hopefully this doesn't end up a tangled mess. You can see the ball is going to get fairly misshapen. I am just sort of squirting soap directly on top of it, trying to help color come out. And this is going to have to go through many, many, many washes and rinses. And I've already got liquid under my gloves. Um, the gloves are mainly on to keep my hands from getting stained anyway. Um, and the concern here is that I want to make sure that this gets rinsed enough so that way it's not bleeding because I don't want to like get dye on myself or fling it around as I'm using the nitty naughty or something like that. On the flip side though, I don't really want to let it dry as a ball because I don't want it to get mildewy. So there lies the conundrum. I am using warm water right now, and certainly the level of dye that's coming out is not staining my hands, so that second concern might not be as big a deal. I wonder, I wonder if I could just like mount it up here and let the water just sort of like go over it, but I do love the way that the colors are coming out of it. Um, I think that that is really beautiful and really, really cool. Uh, ooh, but look at the, the way it looks on the side because, again, we're starting to make things nice and tingly. So I'm going to do my best and we will keep printing. Yeah. 
The water is honestly carrying faster on this ball than it has on some of the other yarns that I dyed on the same day. Um, here I am like squeezing it underwater. And there's definitely a little bit of color that's coming out, but it is a tiny, tiny bit of color. I don't know if it's advisable to put this through the spin dryer. I do have another can of yarn that I could use to help offset the like balance issues. I'm tempted to try because I don't want to stretch this out as I unravel it. Uh, cotton has a little less memory than, say, wool. Whew, I'm nervous, but all things considered, I mean, there's a little bit of color. I mean, I guess I'll put it through a few more, like, soaking rinses, but this is really, really clear. With a second skein of yarn, this came out of the spin dryer, like, mostly dry. It's not dripping. Um, I might let it dry like overnight or something before I try to unravel it, but it's definitely not dripping and that's awesome. But I think that the counterbalance of the other skein was a very, very important factor. It's been a couple days and I am really, really impressed. Like the, the other yarn that I dried died within 24 hours, which is so unheard of for cotton. And this actually feels almost completely dry. There might be some dampness in the center, but it should be really easy to wind onto the Nitty Naughty. Thank you, Nina Soft Spin Dryer. You guys, I am pleasantly surprised. There is more color towards the center of this cake than I anticipated. And the yarn really does have a really awesome tie-dye feel uh, because there are these bright whites and these like sharp patches of color. Uh, I'm so happy. Here is the yarn. Uh, we've got a little bit of mostly solid, but then we've got, honestly, this might be the closest to speckled cotton I have ever done. Uh, probably because there was a lot of physical resist. The yarn was dry, the colors couldn't soak in, and look at these patterns. I would say that there's a lot more like blue and teal towards this inside and it gets a bit more pink and purple towards the outside, but and until it's knit up, it would be hard to say how much of a gradient um, this really is, but this is really beautiful. I just took the yarn off of the Nitty Naughty and it is, if not completely dry, like 99% dry. Um, I am really impressed. I have never had a yarn cake dry completely, let alone a cotton one, and I, you know, give full credit to the spin dryer, which I know I've been singing about a lot, but it's brand new and I'm really, really excited about it. Now, there isn't a lot of crimp or anything in the yarn. There's like a tiny bit from it being in the cake and drying, but when I was washing this, I definitely was not able to rinse the center very well, so I do want to go and wash this yarn uh, one more time uh, before sort of signing off on this video. It's time to see what kind of bleeding will happen. Hopefully none. Um, hopefully we don't lose like that beautiful, beautiful white, but uh, hopefully we frickin can absorb some water in this yarn. I mean, come on, yarn. <laughs> I still cannot believe just how um, nervous I was about how this was gonna come out before, but looks like there might be a tiny bit of bleeding, but really not bad given the depth of color that we have in these stacks. I'm gonna add some clear dish soap to here, just to see, made it a little hotter, really trying to get this wet now, and okay, we are seeing some bleeding, but again, that is not bad at all, especially not for tie-dye. Um, I know that this is going to require a reasonable amount of washing, and so I will 
be doing that. But this is, you know, the reason why I usually, like anything cake dyed, I will wash it after the fact because it's really, really hard to wash um, when you can't access all of the fibers. But then I will hang this up to dry and we'll come back to some conclusions. Through that extra washing, maybe the colors bled a little tiny bit. Maybe it's not pure white. I can't tell if it's the light or if I see some like hints of pink uh, or maybe blue on those sections. Either way, this yarn is so stunning. And I can't believe how frustrated and disappointed I was feeling when it wasn't working. I went for it. I was like, well, this is gonna be a fail or this is gonna have like only a tiny amount of color and then the rest might be meh. I hoped and hoped and hoped that by adding color just to the outside of this cake that we would end up with some reasonable color penetration. And we did! We ended up with this awesome speckled cotton yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and not only is Miss Frizzle from the Magic School Bus sort of a fashion icon for me, but I love her approach to learning. And that's something I try to really take to heart. I try to take chances, get messy, and make mistakes because sometimes through taking chances, we end up creating something that is just so, so beautiful. And don't get me wrong, I know I'm not inventing a new technique. I might be rediscovering something that someone else has been doing for a while. But in just exploring and having these moments of self-discovery while playing with color, it is so, so much fun. This is why I like to encourage anyone who wants to start off dyeing yarn is to just go and play with color. Whether you're doing full skeins of yarn or even just starting with mini skeins, if you go and play and approach your yarn dyeing with, I wonder what will happen if, and if you have that mindset, then suddenly anything you create is really, really cool. Now, obviously, everyone has the different preferences, and while I love probably 99% of the yarn that I dye, um, I certainly wouldn't necessarily knit with 99% of the colorways that I dye. Uh, so there is a lot of personal preference involved, but when you go in wanting to see what will happen, it is so, so easy to be excited and delighted by the results. Of course, watch. If I try to replicate this, maybe it won't turn out the same way. Maybe this is just a happy accident from the universe. Either way, I'll take it. I think it's gorgeous and I absolutely love this yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos. I love to try new to me techniques for the first time on the camera, whether I'm sort of doing a twist on something I've done before or trying out a dye I've never used before. Um, I like to be able to share with you this, the way that I experience this for the first time or maybe for the hundredth time. But I think that uh, yeah, it's just so much fun and you don't want to miss any of it. If you're a really big fan of Chemnitz and would like to support um, us and the content that we create on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patreon is a platform that connects fans with content creators and allows you to subscribe and help support the content that you love. In exchange, there's a lot of really cool perks. Um, there's links in the video description and iCards so you can go check it out. Thank you so, so much for watching, everyone.